So we have now made it to Hollyhead and have been speaking to all sorts of people along our journey. Today, right now, we are speaking to David, who works for Minesto, particularly about using the resources of this coast for renewable energy. And the resource that you can see that's most obvious everywhere is the incredible power of the ocean. What exactly is it that you develop? So we are a developer of a, of a tidal energy system uh, and there's many ways of collecting energy from, from the tides but the way that we are doing it is, is using an underwater kite. So the kite uh, in the full scale version would be about the same size as a, as a small training aircraft. Okay, yeah, so I've got that. And 10 or 12 metre, yeah, similar wing, tail, rudders, uh, and instead of a propeller at the front, we have a rotor at the front. So the rotor actually collects the energy rather than powers the, the aeroplane through the air. So it's basically responding to water moving across it that is. That turns turned. it. And yep. it turning turns a generator, and the generator then creates the power, and the power goes through the tether. So the, the kite is tethered to the seabed. And, and the seabed, then at the seabed, we've got a cable that goes to shore to the grid. So that's that's the complete system. The good thing about the system is is what we do is we fly it across the flow, not with the flow. And those of you who have, who have actually flown a stunt kite on the beach or, know the or power. Or kite surfing, is it similar? Or to that? kite surfing okay. knows the power that that can create when you. When you lower your kite down to very close to the beach, the kite suddenly goes really fast across the beach yeah. and pulls really hard. With a really strong force. Uh, with a yeah. really strong force. And, and what we're doing is exactly the same thing, but underwater. So we get the benefit of the speed, but we also get the benefit that the water is 800 times denser than the air. So we get a kind of a double benefit by, by doing it un underwater. And by doing that, we can actually um, amplify the flow, the tidal flow, by about 10 times. So the kite is actually going through the water 10 times faster than the tidal flow is going through. And that has two benefits. The first benefit is everything can be a lot smaller. Okay. Because power is proportional to speed cubed. So that, you know, a small change in speed makes a big change difference in, in power. In the amount that you can generate. In the amount you can generate. Okay. And the other thing is that we can use that mechanism to fly in slower currents to amplify the speed of the current to still generate in slower currents. And why here? What is what is special about this particular bit of Why here? Well, you can see today it's just beautiful. That's not the main reason why we're here. It's, a, it's a, That's a nice to have. Um, for, for a good tidal site, you need a number of things. The first, of, obviously, is, is, is flow um, and, a, and a reasonably sized flow because we're in the in the starting of this uh, this um, development of this kite. So at the moment we're looking for reasonably sized flow and there's good flows here. And every 12 hours the RSC fills and empties. So there's always water moving in the RSC, both in the top and this the is bottom. All the RSC is it's that we can all see? the RSC. So okay. so and that fills and empties every every 12 hours. And then when it comes across an obstruction like like we are here in, in Hollyhead Island, it, it then has to go round the obstruction. And and the, and the fact that it has to go round is, is the same principle as an aerofoil section. So it, it speeds yeah. up and it's that speeding up that we tap into. So it's not everywhere in the RSC, but wherever there's an obstruction, and there's many in the RSC, is potentially a good site for, for using and trapping that, that tidal energy and capturing it and taking it back to land. So, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the way that we generate power with this tidal kite which is tethered to the seabed we like relatively deep water and there's relatively deep water about four miles offshore here so really good <clears throat> the third thing is um, we need to export the power and there's a good strong grid connection in Hollyhead through historical development so that's that's really positive and the fourth is um, we need good infrastructure because we need the supply chain we need good supply of people and we could need good support, political support. And what we found in, in, in Wales, especially in North Wales, is a combination of all of those three, three or four things. And that makes this a very good site for us to develop our system. So for anybody who doesn't know anything about tidal energy, imagine that you could peel back the surface of the ocean. Yeah. What would you be able to see? Is there a physical thing out there now? 
what would you be able to see? Yeah, so so we have equipment out there now, and but you can't see it. And, and one of the attractions of our system is is even when it's an, an, a big array and generating, you will not be able to see anything on the surface. So do, people do like that. And there's a there's a there's a very much a kind of a marmite thing around wind turbines in there too. Right? Some people yeah, love some them. Some people love them, and some people <laughs> others don't. don't. Others don't. So so we don't give people an option. We say. You can't see it. I'm sorry, but underneath. So if you if you peel off the ocean, what you'll see is a is a foundation which pins the, the tether to the seabed, and that could be. At the moment, it's a, it's a, just a, a simple lump of concrete, but in the future, it'll be probably a pile that's uh, drilled and grouted into the seabed. So very minimal disturbance okay. to the seabed. Mm -hmm. uh, a tether, and th and then this kite, which is which is buoyant which when the tide's not flowing, and obviously every six hours it, it, it changes direction, so there's a period of time when it's not flowing, it just then, it's like a cork on a string, it just hovers in, in the water, but it hovers at a depth that allows shipping just to go over the top. So it's not obstructing you know, the sort of navigation or normal shipping at all. So that, that's, again, a good benefit for the, for the local users of the sea. And then when the tide starts picking up, we, it then automatically dives down um, to the, to the, towards the seabed and when it's gathered up enough speed, it, we then turn it so it then flies in a figure of eight, if you can imagine it. But it's, mm -hmm. it's a figure of eight on its side, so the, the wings are, are, are sort of side on to the tether, yeah. so it flies like this. If the tide's going in this direction, it flies in a figure of eight like this and, and just continuously goes round for as long as this tidal flow goes. And, and generating power all the time back to back to the grid. Right. So you've you've mentioned that in the in the installation and the footprint, there's a minimal uh, minimal impact to the seabed. What about the impact anywhere that you you build something in a natural environment? There'd be some impact. What would that be for marine life down there? Or how are you how are you testing and monitoring that? Yes, that's a really good question because you know we don't I don't want to install something that has an environmental impact. The company doesn't. The regulator in, in Wales doesn't as well. So we're all on the same side, but we have a few challenges because we actually don't know right now everything we need to know about the behavior of animals, diving birds, fish, around these tidal energy devices. And so what, what we're doing and what everybody else in the industry is doing is, is putting in demonstration projects for actually monitoring what's going on and actually either looking or listening in our case we're listening for animals to detect where they are uh, and and in, in various places around the world and so far in all the installations around the world there hasn't been one instance where there's been an impact event which which is significant so so we are very happy with that but that's not the end of the story because we want to build out and put bigger and bigger arrays in so we'll we'll just continue to monitor and make sure that there is no impact going forward as well. And as I know now with an electric power motor, even though there's not a loud motor noise, there's anything sort of turning is making a noise. Yep. But it, in this case, you think actually that having the, each device making a noise is potentially a positive because at least then it would notify big mammals or whatever that there is a device there. Correct, yeah. So we one of the things we do is to actually record the sound of the kite flying underwater. And it's at such a level, as you quite rightly said, it's detectable by animals, but it, it's not harmful to animals if they're in close proximity. So, so the, the com common understanding right now is that it's, it's enough to warn animals, mammals, that there's something going on there and they can avoid it. And this is what we're trying to prove, not only for individual devices, but obviously a raise of devices. We want them to be able to detect it in time to avoid it. Fascinating. And so what is, I'm fascinated by your journey and how you ended yeah. up in tidal energy. What were you, what were you doing originally? You're, you're an engineer, is that yeah, right? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a civil structural engineer. Started off in, in buildings, moved across into oil and gas. So for a, about 20 mm. years I, I was designing marine structural.